to the commission here and say how honored I am both to chair this and to the great work that Chairman Smith has done to also bring this team together on the 35th yeah. anniversary of Tiananmen Square. Today we're holding important hearings to highlight not only the demonstrations that occurred over three decades ago, but the challenge that continues. I remember being a child and watching on NBC News as the anchor highlighted this gentleman here. Mm -hmm. Standing as a beacon, not just to the individuals of China, against standing up to tyranny, but really a world at the precipice, facing down both communist China and the Soviet Union and their proxies around the world. And here, no more than anywhere else, we saw the first breaches in that horrible wall of communism's takeover of a world. For those of you who are here today, both those who were on the ground when it happened and those who continue to be a voice for democracy and human rights. We are so grateful for your experiences and your voice, and we recognize that there is much more that needs to be done. As we gather here today, we not only remember the brave individuals who stood up in the name of democracy in 1989 in the streets of Beijing, but also to examine ways in which the CCP maintains a stranglehold on free speech throughout that country and exports it around the world today including its detrimental effect and intimidation factor right here in the United States on U.S. soil today, as one of our witnesses is exemplifying. This commission has examined time and time again Xi Jinping's brutal rule and has turned the clock backwards on the people of China. And despite the victories won in 89, we have seen the sun continue to set. His desire to crush political dissidents, silent opposing ideologies, threaten those who would challenge his power, signifies that China has descended into a near total authoritarian, authoritarian dystopia. This overwhelming suppression is not limited to immediate threats to Xi's power, but rather transcends decades of opposing and intolerable narratives. As we have learned today, the inability for those in mainland China to discuss the 1989 Tiananmen Square demonstration showcases the length in which the CCP will go, not only to whitewash history, but to bury those, literally in some cases, who disagree with the party. It's critical that we understand why the CCP continues to silence the story of Tiananmen Square and identify the tactics in which they're doing to repress speech today. So I applaud this commission for working together, not only in a bipartisan, bicameral way and with the White House, but to give voice to those who have been silenced. I want to thank our witnesses for your bravery, 